Good afternoon. This is Kyle Welch with RCR Wireless News. Thank you for attending Data Monetization, Leveraging Subscriber Data for Rapid Service Development and Improved Customer Segmentation, presented by Comscore. Our presenter today is Jeremy Kopp, Vice President Telecoms at Comscore. Uh, just a reminder to everyone that within 24 hours of this webinar, we will provide you with a link to the on-demand version of today's webinar. Um, during the webinar, we encourage you to submit questions via the control panel, um, which we will answer the questions at the end of the webinar. Um, with that being said, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Jeremy. Thanks, Kyle. And uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, what we're going to take a look at today is how uh, carriers are able to use the data they have within their organizations uh, to uh, generate increased revenues, increased margins, and better customer experiences through the monetization of that data. And we're probably all aware that device prolifer proliferation is here. We have millions of subscribers uh, connected to carriers, many of whom have multiple devices generating huge volumes of data. So it's not just about smartphones. Uh, these guys have tablets. Uh, they have hotspots, dongles, and data cards through which they connect PCs and other devices. Um, and they have PCs themselves directly connected to the mobile network. All of these devices are generating huge volumes of data. How can those carriers uh, leverage that data uh, to better monetize their subscriber base? So what I'm going to do today is dive straight in with three example case studies uh, around monetization, looking at uh, customizing offers to individual subscribers, looking at tariff plan tailoring at a segment level, so looking at uh, across the subscriber base uh, and uh, identifying how tariffs can be optimized, and then how the data might be used uh, to improve targeting and returns on campaigns uh, by looking at specific segments of the subscriber base. And hopefully through those uh, case studies, uh, I'll give you an idea of the kind of insights and analytics that can be generated within a carrier environment. And then take a step back and understand uh, what needs to happen to monetize all of that data. What type of information is available in the environment? How can it be segmented, categorized, and then analytics and insights generated from it? And finally, I'll give a very brief overview of Comscore's subscriber analytics platform, which is a software solution to deliver these insights and analytics within this environment. So first off, uh, three use cases uh, for monetization of data within uh, the carrier space. First, looking at uh, a churn reduction and upsell opportunity focused on individual subscribers and understanding an individual subscriber uh, and their behavior. Secondly, how to optimize new revenue from uh, product propositions and offers based on understanding the behaviors of subscribers within a segment. And secondly, uh, sorry, thirdly, how we can improve uh, next offer adoption or uh, uh, new offer adoption by understanding uh, subscribers we want to target with particular attributes in particular segments. So the first case study uh, is a scenario uh, in a customer care environment where an individual subscriber might contact customer care either on the phone or perhaps in a retail store um, with uh, some issue with their bill. Uh, and this uh, typically might arise from them having exceeded a monthly data allowance or data cap. And this is unexpected for them. They don't understand why they, uh, they have this exception, um, why they've used so much data, and uh, more specifically, why uh, they're being billed for it. So uh, what we can do by understanding the uh, exact behaviors of that subscriber and surfacing that information to the care rep is allow them to handle the situation 
uh, improve the retention of subscribers by uh, keeping them happy uh, and potentially upsell in that environment. So the typical uh, workflow here is that as the subscriber calls in, uh, we can uh, instantly bring up uh, that subscriber's records uh, to the customer care rep. Uh, and they can very quickly see uh, from the dashboard that uh, this particular subscriber through their data allowance very early in the month. They've uh, used a huge amount of data in the first three or four days of the month. So that's clearly the area of their problem. And by understanding the type of usage that that subscriber has exhibited, we can see they're a big application user. Some 91% or so of the data they've consumed has been through applications. So that's really likely to be the source. And so uh, revealing more data about the specific services they've used, uh, we can understand either which sites they've been browsing uh, or which applications they've been using. And uh, as we know, this particular subscriber is a big application user. We can see very clearly that uh, TuneIn Radio is probably the app that's been causing all of their issues. About 80% of their data usage has been driven through TuneIn Radio. So given this, the care rep can now uh, talk the subscriber through this issue. They can understand whether the use of TuneIn Radio is, is intentional or unintentional. Uh, or whether it might in case be a, a badly behaved application that's somehow chewing through data without uh, the subscriber being aware. So if it's intentional use, then the subscriber actually really enjoys listening to TuneIn Radio and they'd really like to be able to do that right through the month. There's the opportunity right there for an upsell and we can uh, build into uh, the workflow of the care rep the ability to present that as an option to them uh, and give them a, perhaps a credit note against a, uh, a, an upsell in tariff that will allow them to listen to TuneIn Radio. If it's unintentional, then the care rep can walk them through the steps needed to uh, avoid any overages in future um, and uh, make them aware of what's causing the issue. Again, uh, hopefully ending with a, a, with a happy subscriber and a subs subscriber that's, that's less likely to churn. So what's the impact uh, in terms of a return on investment, if you like, for this particular scenario for uh, an operator, let's take an example, one with 40,000 uh, overage disputes every month. So the insights that are being delivered by being able to understand the individual subscriber's behavior are that they're a heavy app user and that they've exceeded their monthly uh, data limit. We can identify readily that it's the TuneIn Radio app that is causing them the issue, um, and that it might have been an unintentional uh, usage of this, or certainly unintentionally causing the uh, exceeding of the data cap. And so the care rep can uh, understand the normal usage pattern, understand the pattern that's caused this ex exceptional dispute, is how to avoid this in the future. And uh, as mentioned earlier, there might be an opportunity uh, to provide a credit towards a larger data plan that will allow them to use the app in the future. And the result here, well, uh, subscribers that are having their disputes uh, resolved quickly and efficiently tend to be happy subscribers. They're less likely to churn, um, and we might assume that we uh, save maybe 2,000 subscribers or so per month, 24,000 per year from churning. And that equates to around about $7 million in annual savings. That doesn't take into account any potential upsells we might achieve uh, by uh, being able to deliver them a, a bigger tariff, a more valuable tariff. So we can very quickly see from just one uh, scenario how uh, having this data about particular usage at a service level can very quickly allow the customer care reps to efficiently resolve the uh, subscribers' problems um, and very quickly uh, deliver that result without having to go through a protracted um, conversation or investigation with the subscriber. So the second case study is uh, slightly different. Now, rather than looking at uh, individual subscribers, we're looking at the subscriber base as a whole. 
and specifically being able to look across all of the existing tariff plans and how subscribers within those tariff plans vary. So uh, it gives us a tool to understand how subscribers are behaving within the tariff plans we've defined and identify opportunities uh, for perhaps reprofiling those tariff plans or introducing new tariff plans. And in this particular case study, uh, we're going to focus on uh, two imaginary tariffs. Uh, one we've labeled Plan G, uh, which is a, a limited data plan. It's a data-only plan designed for uh, tablets and uh, PC devices. It has a 750 megabyte uh, uh, limit. Uh, on a monthly basis and costs around 12 euros a month. Uh, thanks to the ability to uh, look at an aggregate uh, of all subscribers on this plan and look at the cum cumulative distribution of data use, we can better understand that some 19% or so of the subscribers on the plan are actually exceeding that data limit on a monthly basis. Uh, the average use per user is around but we also have some very high intensity users, about 10% of those on the plan, that are using more than two gigabytes a month. So from a carrier perspective, we clearly have some uh, leaking revenue here. We have uh, subscribers that are using more than their data allowance, and we have a significant proportion of them that are actually very heavy data users and clearly on the wrong plan. The other end of the scale is uh, an unlimited data plan, again targeted at tablet and, and PCs at around 40 euros a month, and we'll call that plan U if you like. Um, much lower number of subscribers we can see, uh, uh, as expected a higher average usage per user of about 4 gigabytes, um, but uh, about half of the subscriber base on this tariff actually use less than 2 gigs and perhaps 70% or so use less than that uh, four gig average. So we've actually uh, uh, can spot, a, if you like, a disparity between these two plans. We have on a limited data subscribers that are significantly exceeding the data allowance. Um, and on the unlimited plan, we have a relatively large number of subscribers that are using um, uh, a relatively small amount of data and therefore might be uh, a little aggrieved at paying the very high uh, tariff uh, for uh, an unlimited plan. So the next piece of insight we can uh, derive to help us uh, understand how we might fix this uh, issue and this apparent disparity is, is understanding the usage behaviors of subscribers on different plans. And because we're able to break down the data usage into uh, different types of data services, whether it's browsing or using streaming services or uh, gaming, uh, data uploads and downloads, uh, we're able to uh, make a comparison between the types of data, uh, data plans uh, and the types of data usage within those plans. And what we see is that on data-only plans, uh, there's a heavy proportion of users uh, that are streaming either uh, video or audio. So about 40% uh, of the total consumption on data-only plans is consumed by uh, streaming compared to 20% on uh, other plans. So we get a great insight as to uh, how consumers are using these types of data plans with their tablets and with their PCs. So taking those insights, we can build uh, some plans and some uh, product offers to uh, potentially address this uh, disparity in use. So first step is, uh, is to refine these plans and uh, uh, perhaps introduce an intermediary plan that sits between the, uh, the limited plan G and the unlimited plan U that addresses those subscribers that are using between one and three gigabytes of data every month. So uh, an upsell in terms of the monthly um, uh, payment for the plan, um, but uh, we understand that uh, these uh, subscribers are driven by streaming use, perhaps we provide them uh, a special offer uh, to encourage them to switch plans uh, by uh, offering them unlimited access to TV streams. 
So now what we're doing is able to target those subscribers in Plan G that we know are heavy users with an upsell offer to move to this new tariff with the offer of unlimited TV streaming. So from the carrier perspective, we have a, a new revenue stream from the upsell, uh, and we actually have uh, uh, hopefully a consumer that we're more likely to retain uh, because they're not uh, uh, forever exceeding their data allowance. Uh, they're not on a plan that doesn't suit their usage behavior. The other action we might take is uh, looking at those, specifically those heavy data users and coming up with a shared data plan for them that allows them uh, multiple devices uh, and a higher data limit uh, for payment per month. So again, targeting the, uh, the usage behavior that we see from the existing subscriber base and using that as a mechanism to uh, deliver an upsell uh, to a particular segment of the subscriber base that are on this tariff. So again, we're retaining uh, subscribers, we're growing subscribers in terms of their revenues, um, and uh, we are hopefully uh, addressing their specific behavioral requirements. There's another piece we might consider here as well, and that's that the users uh, on the unlimited data plan that, that use a relatively small amount of data might also be targeted with this intermediate plan which whilst it might not provide a revenue uplift, certainly can contribute to uh, subscriber retention and perhaps prevention of uh, these unhappy subscribers from churning to another plan on another carrier rather than sticking with our own business. The third case study uh, is on targeting uh, offers at particular subscriber bases based on their preferences um, and particular attributes of uh, a segment of the subscriber base. So because we're able to understand uh, all of the subscribers um, and all of their preferences, uh, attributes, and usage, uh, we're able to uh, segment the base uh, uh, in, in a way uh, in which we want to target directly. So in this instance, we are uh, interested in switching prepaid uh, consumers to a more lucrative postpaid uh, plan. So firstly, we need to understand uh, what the opportunity is in terms of uh, the prepaid subscriber base and uh, whether there's a, um, uh, a segment of that prepaid base that are uh, likely to respond to an offer for uh, a postpaid plan. So we're able to look at the distribution of uh, data use uh, by volume segments so we can filter all of the information and the insights by just those on a prepaid plan. And this turns up the perhaps unsurprising fact that uh, uh, although 13% of our uh, active users are prepaid users, they use only 8% of the total data volume across the entire network and their average data usage is less than that of the average across the entire base. Uh, perhaps uh, more interestingly is that there's a significant proportion of them, 10% or so, that use a lot of data per month. So we can, uh, uh, we can assume that there's a section of uh, the prepaid subscriber base that would be receptive to a postpaid offer if we can construct it in such a way that appeals to them um, and will uh, deliver them the kind of service that they, uh, they're used to using. So the second piece of the puzzle is uh, understanding the devices they use. Um, and we can see that prepaid users uh, are much more likely to have a feature phone than those on uh, uh, postpaid or, or across the entire uh, active subscriber base. So some 24% uh, of the prepaid user base have a feature phone uh, compared to 9% in the total user base. Uh, clearly the corollary of that is that uh, only 55% of prepaid users have a smartphone compared to 71% across the entire base. So now we've got an idea that prepaid users are, are using data. Uh, we know a lot of them have feature phones, fewer of them have smartphones. Uh, 
we can also understand how they're consuming the data and what data they consume. So uh, uh, we can see uh, on the left-hand side of the slide here that uh, prepaid users are using as much, if not more, browsing than the total user base. Uh, they're pretty heavy users of communication and messaging ser services, but, but not as much as the total user base. And then the rest, they uh, significantly under-index in using. So uh, we get a good idea that prepaid users are heavy browsers, um, and they're interested in communication and messaging. The volume of their data use uh, splits uh, pretty similarly to the total active base. Uh, so there's, there's, uh, there's no uh, clear indicators there as to particular areas to target, but it's the browsing that's uh, certainly a, a key to formulating a product offer uh, to, uh, to hit them in their sweet spot, if you like. And then the final piece is, okay, we know they're heavy browsers, we know uh, a number of them use a significant amount of data, uh, the other dimension to understanding this behavior is a psychographic one, if you like, understanding the, uh, the interest areas of that prepaid subscriber base. And in this particular instance, we can see it's uh, heavily dominated by social media use. 81% or so uh, of the uh, page views are uh, delivered in the social media category and uh, we can drill down even further and understand that most of those are delivered through Facebook. So our prepaid user base um, are heavy Facebook users. They're really into their social media. This gives us all the pieces to uh, define an offer that will uh, stand uh, best chance of delivering a high conversion rate on a campaign in looking to convert prepaid to postpaid. So we might build a, uh, a campaign offer that uh, delivers unlimited social media access or unlimited Facebook access in a post-played plan, perhaps bundled with a specific smartphone that uh, is targeted specifically at the, um, uh, the heavy data users in the prepaid segment. So now we stand a much better chance of getting a, um, a high conversion rate because we're targeting the right segment. We know what drives their usage and their interest. So we're at to retain and grow this segment of subscribers. We're moving them on to a higher margin uh, postpaid as well as the additional uh, revenues that that generates. So again, a return on investment can be calculated from a very sing simple single instance of a uh, campaign, uh, which can be repeated many, many times uh, for different segments of the subscriber base and for different product offers uh, across the, uh, the subscriber base. So that's all well and good. Uh, there, there are three great examples of how um, customers can be retained, um, how churn can be minimized, how uh, revenues can be grown, but what do operators need to be able to monetize this data? What are the data streams that need to be used? How are they segmented and categorized? And then how can analytics and insights from that data to drive the business in the marketing and the customer care areas? So it's all about focusing on the key business drivers uh, for this improvement uh, and then understanding which data is needed uh, to drive that. Uh, and, and the three areas we consider that um, are vital to uh, the carrier's business are firstly, being able to capture the right kind of subscriber. So understand the subscribers that uh, are uh, generating revenue uh, are generating revenue at good margins, where to find them and what their behaviors are, and then how you might attract them to your service. Once they're within your service, within your network and connected, then make sure you keep them there. Uh, so retain them as customers. And that gives you the opportunity to then grow them as customers 
increment the revenue from them, improve the margins from them by understanding their behaviors, uh, by understanding the products uh, and the propositions that they will respond to uh, to deliver those improved revenues. But the data streams that drive all this typically already exist within a mobile operator environment. Firstly, it's data from the network, uh, so data that describes all of the traffic flowing across the operator's infrastructure. That can be data generated by all different types of devices. It can be voice calls, it can be uh, messaging, SMS or MMS traffic, uh, all of which have usage records associated with them in a, a large volume of data that can be connect, collected directly from the network. Second piece of data is uh, what you might refer to as CRM data or data that describes the subscribers. So it's going to be a, uh, a profile of the subscriber, uh, perhaps billing information that describes their, their tariff, um, data about uh, the handsets that are used, um, particular uh, segments or uh, uh, existing definitions of uh, customer groups. And any other geomarketing information that might exist around the subscriber base. So again, taking all of the fields from uh, a CRM infrastructure that again usually exist to describe the subscriber records. And then the final piece is coupling both of those with uh, other data that, that might optionally be available from deep packet inspection probes, from the uh, network infrastructure directly, so uh, lower level probes. Uh, within the infrastructure, or indeed any other proprietary data that the operator might have, uh, that might have some fine-grained geospatial information, uh, might have some uh, RF probe information from the network, whatever it might be, uh, that too can be used uh, together with the network data and the subscriber records to uh, be used as a basis for uh, this analytics and, and segmentation. What do you need to get this data into a usable format? A huge volume of raw data that in, it, in of itself isn't much use. Uh, it contains a vast amount of uh, non-human generated traffic um, and uh, it's not in a form that can be readily understood by the business. So step one is to apply business rules to all of that raw data to classify and characterize the traffic. So this means uh, taking out anything in there that, uh, that doesn't add to the insight. Uh, so firstly, that's, uh, that's information that's perhaps not generated by uh, the subscribers themselves. It might be uh, um, uh, information that is uh, relating to how a web page is structured, for example, rather than uh, details of the web page itself. So we're able to do that by applying what we term dictionaries. So uh, a web dictionary that understands all of the websites globally in fine grained detail and being able to match the raw traffic to the actual websites that that traffic relates to. To put it in real world terms, talk about traffic to yahoo.com rather than a bunch of really long URLs describing all different types of data from, your, uh, from Yahoo. Uh, similarly, it applies to uh, mobile applications, so being able to understand connected applications, uh, which uh, application they are and the publisher and the media owner that's produced them, uh, and assigning the traffic that's generated by them to that application so we can see behaviors around that specific application. Extending that to uh, other protocols and streaming methodologies that generate data. So this can be audio and video streaming services. It can be email, instant messaging, voice over IP, pretty much anything uh, that can generate data across the network. Uh, we need to be able to uh, put that data into the right bucket, if you like, uh, so that it can be described to the business in terms of those services. So we can talk about a Skype voice over IP uh, usage rather than uh, generic voice over IP usage or indeed just a whole load of raw data describing some form of transaction. 
And then the final piece is being able to understand the devices that are generating that traffic. So being able to classify the end user device, if you like, and not only in terms of its make and model, but going deeper than that and understanding the characteristics of that device. So being able to, uh, if you like, for example, provide insight to compare touchscreen versus non-touchscreen devices, or those that are NFC enabled versus non-NFC enabled. So again, another dimension to being able to generate insight comes from being able to segment the traffic by device type. To all that traffic, we now need to associate it with the subscriber record. So we need to be able to attribute that behavioral activity with all of the subscriber IDs we have from the CRM information. So be able to understand uh, for each subscriber the browsing, the connected app, how they've used streaming music and video sessions, over the top messaging and communication services, for example. So all of the traffic then gets sliced up in another dimension and assigned to uh, individual subscribers. So what this does is enable the insight and the uh, analytics to be derived either from a, uh, an aggregate view of the subscriber base, so being able to look at segments of that subscriber base as we saw in, in a couple of the uh, case studies earlier, so we can slice that by understanding the demographics of the users, the tariff plan they're on, their particular interests, the data services they're using, the device they have, for example, and slice and dice the, the view of behaviors in all of those different ways. Or we can use the same insight uh, on an individual subscriber basis for enhanced customer experience management and enhanced customer care. So there's two key steps in taking all of the raw data that already exists and turning it into actionable insights that can be used directly by the business. And it's all about being able to drive uh, a differentiated subscriber experience based on the promise of the right service at the right quality to the right customer. So in a, in a marketing dimension, that's about getting the right device, the right plan, and the right services to the right subscribers by understanding their behaviors, by understanding their interests, with the goal of generating demand uh, or generating revenue, if you like, um, typically measured through the number of ads, uh, number of subscribers added uh, in the network, the average revenue each of them is generating the uh, cost of adding those subscribers and the lifetime value of, of each of them. And then on a customer care side, it's about delivering the right quality of service and very efficiently resolving any issues that might arise by understanding their behaviors, by understanding uh, any issues that have uh, arisen automatically uh, by seeing it in the data. So that's about maintaining that relationship, minimizing churn, uh, minimizing the resources required to deliver that care uh, by increasing the first call resolution rates and, and decreasing uh, the average call handling time. So we bring all this together in um, a software platform known as Subscriber Analytics. It's a big data platform that delivers all of these types of insights in real time directly to the business users. So it delivers it to screens in a, on a marketeer's PC or screens in front of customer care reps sat in a call center or in a retail store. So it's a platform that turns all of this raw data uh, relating to the subscribers' behaviors and the subscribers themselves into insights that drive revenue, that drive cost reduction, and ultimately allow this differentiated subscriber experience. And the way we do it is pull together uh, that data source that we described, the steps that are needed to process it, uh, so characterizing the raw data with dictionaries, linking it to uh, um, the subscriber records coming from a CRM dimension, uh, linking it also to any other data that might exist within the carrier environment, and then surfacing uh, that insight in very easy to use interactive dashboards 
designed specifically for a care environment or for a marketing environment that allows the end business users uh, to make decisions uh, directly uh, based on real-time information uh, from the analytics and the insights derived from the raw data. And in a care environment, that means uh, providing uh, a root cause analysis of likely issues and also quality of service metrics around uh, all aspects of individual subscribers' uh, activity. So the ability and quality of service on a per subscriber, per service basis uh, massively reduces the amount of information that a care rep needs to uh, get from a subscriber in that interaction. So it's using the data that exists within the operator environment to provide those answers automatically and directly to the care rep. So they can triage problems, they can recognize issues, they can have the business rules built in to resolve those issues um, around quality of service, uh, around billing disputes. And in a marketing dimension, it's uh, allowing the marketeers to have access to the entire subscriber base behaviors in an aggregated view, but a view that they can segment and they can slice and dice uh, to uh, create product propositions to look at feasibility of campaigns and products and to understand the potential ROI of a, uh, a given campaign or a given product. Again, driven at uh, acquiring the right kind of customers, retaining those customers uh, within your service and optimizing the margin as you grow them by upselling them on uh, more uh, appropriate uh, products and plans. So in summary, um, the carriers already have sources of valuable subscriber data. They're generally uh, available in some part of the organization. They may be siloed today, but uh, a lot of this data already exists. And so effectively monetizing that data requires a platform to generate uh, real-time analytics and insights from that data, so bring all the data together by characterizing, characterizing and filtering the raw data and then associating it with uh, subscribers, so associating behaviors with individual subscribers, and then delivering segmentation across multiple dimensions to drive those enhanced product offers to customize the uh, service individuals receive um, and to be able to increase campaign, campaign conversion rates through improved targeting. So if I can, I'll, I'll leave you perhaps with one analogy that hopefully sums up this whole process and the opportunities that exist in monetizing data in a carrier env environment. And that's one of extracting the hidden gold insights from this large pile of raw data dirt. And that's really the, the key focus of subscriber analytics. That's what I had uh, planned to uh, talk about. Uh, my contact details are, are on the screen now. Please feel free to uh, send me any questions or request further information. I can recommend uh, our white paper that uh, goes into uh, more detail than we've been able to cover today on how to turn big data into mobile subscriber insights. Uh, but at this stage, uh, I think we've got some time left, so I'll uh, turn it back to Kyle, and I'm happy to take any questions that the audience might have. Yeah, thanks, Jeremy. We've had a few questions come in during your, your presentation. The first one we have is, so you have focused on using behavioral data to improve revenues from the existing subscriber base. Is it possible to monetize the insight by selling subscriber data, data to external third parties? Uh, yes, that that is possible. So it's um, uh, perfectly there, there. There is a business case for generating additional revenue streams uh, by having the carrier sell uh, part of this information or or some of this insight uh, uh, and analytics externally. And indeed, the subscriber analytics platform is very much designed to make it easy to provision access to selected data and dashboards to those external third parties. So you might imagine uh, 
I don't know, making a dashboard available to a, um, a third party media agency to enable them to look at a particular segment of your subscriber base, perhaps an opted in segment of your subscriber base, so they can uh, understand the demographics and behaviors of that subscriber base with a view to uh, targeting them with marketing campaigns. Okay. So it's also important to mention that the platform includes a, a range of measures to protect data and privacy as well. So uh, especially important goes outside of uh, the carrier organization. Uh, so there are a range of measures there. One final thing I would say on that point is that our recommendation is that uh, carriers use these insights internally first. So uh, the business is, is in a much better position to understand how best to take them to market if they're actually using the analytics and insights to drive their own business uh, before trying to, uh, to build a strategy of externally monetizing the data. I think it's also the case that the opportunities for uh, um, external monetization are pretty small in terms of, uh, in comparison with those that exist from what we might call internal monetization, so increasing revenues and margins from, from some of the activities that, that we've outlined in the case studies today. So yes, it's possible. Uh, we think the opportunity is small today. Recommendation is for carriers to, to start using it internally first. Yeah, great. Uh, next question. Is it possible to understand user activities and behaviors geographically? Yes, it is. Um, and I didn't actually touch on that in, uh, in the limited time we have today. Uh, but we are able uh, in, to um, segment all of the user behaviors uh, by arbitrary geographic regions as well, for example, zip codes or, or postal codes. Um, and also by the, uh, the network cell site topology. So uh, we, uh, we provide an interactive mapping dashboard uh, where you can look at uh, all different types of data services filtered in exactly the same way as, uh, as some of the, uh, uh, the analytics I showed earlier to perhaps understand uh, hotspots of usage to be identified maybe for regionally targeted products or, or offer campaigns uh, might also be used for network strategy decision making. Where's the best uh, uh, areas to prioritize 4G rollout, for example, or LTE rollout? So we might be able to spot hotspots of video streaming usage or um, perhaps voice over IP usage in, in certain areas, whatever it might be. Uh, yes, that's another dimension to, uh, to looking at all of the activities and behaviors of subscribers slicing it up by uh, geographic region. Okay, uh, next question coming in is, can I define my own customer segments and reports? Uh, yes, um, so w what we have within the subscriber analytics platform is a, is a comprehensive range of dashboards and reports that uh, we believe cover most of uh, business use cases um, but uh, in case we haven't covered them all, and there, there'll always be specific use cases for, for particular businesses, we do provide an interactive ed editor to allow uh, new segments, uh, new KPIs, and new dashboards to be defined that can be used either pre privately by the individual creator or right across all users of the platform. So this gives a mechanism for the carrier to experiment with segmentation uh, perhaps use it to refine their existing uh, consumer market segments, um, uh, refine the way they view their subscriber base and behaviors. Um, it's also worth noting that uh, as they go through that process and perhaps modify uh, their consumer segments and, and which of their subscribers fit in different segments, that will be automatically reflected in, uh, in the analytics provided by the platform thanks to our link to the, the existing CRM infrastructure. So there's a continuous update of the segments that a particular subscriber sits in. Uh, so it gives the, uh, the carrier, if you like, a mechanism to experiment with segmentation and then apply it uh, to their entire subscriber base. Okay, uh, next one. Is it possible to understand behaviors in terms of subscriber demographics and or predefined customer marketing segments? 
Uh, yes, so the information we have coming from uh, the existing CRM database within the carrier describes the uh, demographics of uh, the users uh, where available, so their age and gender. Um, and there may be any number of different um, segmentation flags, if you like, that, uh, that identify how uh, the carrier has decided to split their subscriber base. And these can be uh, consumer marketing segments, or they can be types of customer, so they might differentiate between uh, um, I don't know, consumers, business users, uh, uh, and other types. Uh, it can also reflect, uh, obviously, pre- and post-paid uh, consumer types. So, um, yes, we can uh, segment and view the analytics based on uh, a whole range of different demographic measures um, and also uh, by existing um, segmentation or, or uh, or flags that exist within the carrier's business. Okay. Uh, your demonstration focused on a consumer service. Uh, what about enterprise and B2B accounts? Yeah, uh, good point. And, uh, and if only we had a, a webinar that was twice as long, right, we could, we could fit everything in. So, um, yes, we, uh, we have specific dashboards that focus on, on insights and analytics for groups of subscribers. So the ability to tie uh, uh, groups of subscribers to a particular uh, user group. That might be a, an enterprise customer group, or it might be a set of VIP users, uh, or it could be any other arbitrary set of users. And then be able to look at behaviors and the quality of service um, uh, uh, within that group. So it starts to provide a really valuable tool for uh, enterprise account management and sales teams uh, to understand performance uh, within their account, how best to uh, um, profile tariffs uh, and produce propositions for that uh, enterprise, and also potentially to proactively resolve any uh, service level issues that, that might be spotted through the platform. Great. We have a few more questions. Um, what was the data source you used for the tune-in analysis, and how did Comscore access this data source? So uh, the examples that uh, that we used are um, actually based on uh, real data from some of our customer deployments. Uh, so it's uh, it's real carrier data, albeit uh, anonymized, um, and uh, we uh, that's. That's one particular instance we saw in a real-life scenario uh, based on, uh, on a subscriber using uh, too much tune-in radio. Okay. Um, next one. Uh, what type of integration is required in the typical size of the project? Are there any tiers available for basic to premium integration depending on the feature set selected? Uh, so the, um, the integration process is typically one of connecting the data sources to the subscriber analytics platform. And so uh, the, the, the raw content of the data is, is pretty much the same uh, across all implementations. It might just be in different formats. So we, we typically build connectors to, uh, to, to make sure the data can be ingested by the platform. There's then a, uh, an important piece of the integration process is the QAing that data to so make sure it all makes sense and that all of the analytics and insights uh, uh, are working correctly. Um, and there might be an element of customization relating to the particular mix of dashboards or reporting that's required. So um, we're, we're very used to doing that kind of integration. It's um, there's no fixed time frame for it, but it's of the order of, uh, of a few months. So maybe typically five months or so from start to very end when the, the, uh, the uh, platform goes live in the business. Um, and we don't have uh, different tiers of, of uh, integration level. Uh, really, the, uh, the reporting and the analytics are provided at, at the back end are driven from the data that's available at the front end. So it's possible to, um, to 
configure the platform to just deliver the uh, the dashboards and the reporting that uh, um, is available because of the data sources that are there. So there's there's no tiering, but uh, um, the data sources are pretty much common across many uh, implementations. So um, most all of the functionality is available to everyone. Uh, as a follow up to that question. Um... The, is what you talked about, is that provided on a turnkey solution managed by Comscore or as a software package to be managed by each operator? So the typical uh, implementation is of a software platform that is uh, deployed within the operator's infrastructure. So it sits within their, uh, their data centers or their, um, their operation centers um, and processes the data locally. So this is important in terms of privacy and data governance, and it means that, uh, that none of the operator's data leaves their infrastructure. Nothing comes to, to Comscore. So the platform is uh, typically managed by the operator uh, within their infrastructure with support from Comscore. We're able to provide uh, support uh, in terms of um, uh, helping to uh, that management process. Uh, providing maintenance and support for the software platform, but it's, it's typically within an operator environment. Uh, given that deployment model, it is, it is also possible to deploy it uh, in uh, external data centers or indeed have it hosted by Comscore, but that's uh, not a typical deployment uh, model. Most All of our deployments to date are very much uh, within the operator environment. Okay, um, finally, uh, you mentioned geospatial data. Have you addressed issues related to network loads resulting from active data pull, and have you addressed passive data pull? Wow, um, it's probably more technical than, than uh, I'm capable of answering, but, but generally um, the, the key to um, balancing this need to ingest the data with, with what the network can, uh, can offer is one of uh, ensuring that uh, we either batch up the data uh, that, as it's delivered or uh, find some mechanism to minimize the load on, on the network. So the, the bottom line is that we can, we can essentially accept data at the rate at which the, the network probes or the source of data can provide it. Uh, we just need to, uh, as part of the integration design, make sure that we're not overloading uh, any elements of the network. Okay, I think we have time for just one more question. Um, what are your thoughts around privacy issues when it comes to looking to specific application or website used, um, browsed by the customers, um, particular um, as it applies to subscribers and analytics? Yeah, and this, this is an important point. And, um, you know, in, in walking through very quickly some of these case studies, I, I've skipped some of the steps that, that typically go through. Um, so in, in the case of customer care, where um, there, are, uh, there is individual subscriber data uh, capable of being viewed, we, there is often um, uh, an interlock, if you like, where the customer care rep will ask uh, explicit permission from the caller or from the visitor to the retail store to have a look at that type of data. Now, the requirements for that check and that opt-in, if you like, uh, vary uh, by territory uh, and, and by country. So um, the key to the solution we provide is enabling all those different types of protection mechanisms, um, and uh, we can work with uh, a, an operator in a given region to understand exactly what protection is needed. So in a in a customer care environment, it, there are mechanisms to, uh, to, to check that the subscriber is comfortable with the information the care rep can see. In the marketing environment, it's typically uh, looking at data in aggregate, uh, so it's not looking at individual subscriber behaviors. Uh, there is uh, also an option to uh, limit that to uh, solely opted in subscribers, so those that are given prior permission for use of their data. Um, and indeed, uh, it's possible to uh, anonymize subscriber data. So uh, in the unlikely event that uh, an individual's behaviors could be seen, it couldn't be traced back to an individual. So 
we have a whole series of mechanisms built into the subscriber analytics platform that can provide different levels or layers, if you like, of uh, data governance and, and privacy protection um, as required by the operator and as required by their local legislation. Okay, that about does it for all the time we have. Um, sorry for any questions we did not get to, um, but I just want to remind everyone that we will supply you with an on-demand version of this webinar. And with that being said, I want to thank Jeremy Kopp and Comscore for providing this webinar.